Missing Burby's fishermen rescued two days after boat mishap. Guyana is not ready for law schools, says retired chancellor. A large number of Guyanese youths are finding themselves behind bars. And in sport, three Guyanese received retainer contracts from Cricket West Indies. These are the major stories we are tracking this evening. I'm Ashley Scotland with this, our Monday, October 1 edition of News Update. Welcome and thanks for joining us. The three Burby's fishermen who went missing after a boat mishap in Suriname's waters were today found alive two days after the incident. The men were found grasping onto pieces of the wreckage. Families of the fishermen who hail from quarantine Burbies can breathe a sigh of relief after they were found alive earlier today by Tsunami's authorities. Three of the five crew members were missing after the boat capsized the two days ago. The men have been identified as 23-year-old Andrew Beaton, 27-year-old Rondell Vanderstoop, and his brother, 18-year-old Norris van der Stoep. The men survived by holding on to broken pieces of the vessel that were floating in the river. Well, actually, when, when, this, when the boat broke up, they, they actually called for each other and they got answers. Second time they called and they got answers. But the third time they didn't get answers. I think probably because of the wave, probably spread them out or so. According to information received, about 22 hours on Saturday, a heavy storm ripped through the boat, breaking it to pieces. Two of its occupants were rescued yesterday. Brother of two of the fishermen, Leroy van der Stoep, disclosed that his brothers, along with the other fishermen, left the number 43 foreshore on Friday last. What I heard, I got a phone call that a storm passed and broke the boat up in pieces and two persons were able to rescue and the two were, the other three were not fine. An investigation is ongoing. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. You're watching MTV's News Update. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. At Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optique, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. You minding me business. I noticed you yesterday. You're there watching, 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 watching. Today you're there here again. Why are you minding me business? I'm fed up with your nosy self. Yeah, baby, I just love your windows. Why are you bothering me window? Like you housing a window? What kind of window really in your house? I got some all louvers windows that I need to change. Louvers! <laughs> Girl, I let you in for a secret, right? Peace and got a special deal right now. You go along there, you buy 10 window, you get a free bathroom window. Oh, for the love of God, try with them louvers window and go down to Peace and modernize. Peace and windows and doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Come and get it. Water is a vital element. That is why Slim Jet introducing the latest water purifier. Seven different stages that is going to purify the water, take out all kind of bacteria like cholera, typho, coliforms, worms, pests as rot and sun and dust. 
Remember, your health and your family health depend on the quality of water you drink. You can get this water purifier only at the Slim Jet City Mall. Save a lot, a lot of money with the water purifier. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. The sale is on at Isaac Investments. Get a DeWalt cordless drill for $39,000. Harbor Breeze ceiling fan starting at $10,000. Industrial class Husqvarna brush cutters starting at $65,000. Ranch 450 Husqvarna chainsaw for only $110,000. Toy built two cycle brush cutter for $50,000. Boland brush cutter for only $25,000. Also introducing our new line of Skecher sneakers. All available at Isaac Investments, located on the second floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0143 or 231-0142. Attorney at Law Anil Nandalal claims that nepotism is continuing by the government as family members are employed at the offices of the Director of Public Prosecution and the Special Organized Crime Unit. This was confirmed by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution, which stated that the officer was employed at the DPP's chamber even before the formation of SOKU. Lashana Gomes, Canadius reports. You cannot have family relationships commingling and conflicting with those who are engaged in the justice system of a country. Because whether it is real or perceived, the thing reeks of bias. Attorney at law, Anil Nandlal. Nandlal is speaking out against what he believes to be numerous cases of nepotism and cronyism by the coalition government. Nandlal is accusing the offices of the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Special Organized Crime Unit, SOKU, of breaking the law by having relatives work for both entities overlooking similar criminal cases. Against that backdrop, my information is that the head of Soku's niece is one of the lawyers at the Director of Public Prosecutions Chambers advising on files sent by Soku to that office. The DPP herself, I understand, has been recusing herself because of her involvement in the Pradoville matter. So this officer, among others I have no doubt, is one of the persons who the head of Soku depends upon for legal advice. So you have an uncle and a niece relationship there. The matter is compounded by the fact that one of the special prosecutors who are retained by Soku is the husband of that very officer in the DPP chambers. 
Meanwhile, communications officer of the DPP, Liz Rahman, confirmed that a person by the name of Tashana James Lake, the wife of Special Prosecutor for Soko, Trenton Lake, is working at the chamber. She explained that James Lake was hired back in 2010 and is currently the Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions. However, Rahman could not confirm if James Lake is related to the head of Soko, Sydney James. The communications officer noted that every state council is only first selected on the basis of their qualifications and not on relations. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. As the government is still pushing to establish a local law school, Justice Cecil Kennard is opposed to that idea. He claimed that there are enough lawyers in the country to service the population. Attorney General Basil Williams has been the lead activist behind Guyana's quest to establish a law school. He claimed that such a school is necessary since only a few students are selected to complete their legal training at the University of the West Indies. Additionally, he claimed a local law school will significantly reduce the cost the students have to pay. However, Chairman of the Caribbean Council of Legal Education, CLE, Senior Counsel Reginald Armour recently stated that Guyana is not ready to establish the proposed Geoff Haynes Law School because the council found a number of breaches in the feasibility study. Armour said the CLE would examine a report on the feasibility study by its subcommittee because that study was not keeping with the rules of the council. The chairman had mentioned that there was no curriculum. But this is not stopping the government from rectifying such and forging ahead. However, the arguments put forth by the Attorney General about the need for a law school is not resting well with retired Justice Cecil Kennard. Justice Kennard affirmed that he does not support the notion of a law school in Guyana, citing there is no need for such. We have overturned the laws and the role. role. Many of them have finding it very, very difficult to exist. As a result of it, a large number of them are taking positions in the government. Justice Kennard noted that Guyana's population has not grown. Therefore, the pool of lawyers can service the entire country. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The government, is staying true to its words of ensuring education, is made accessible to all Guyanese. In this line, the Ministry of Education today signed two contracts for the construction of two secondary schools. Kippany Jordan reports. The two contracts exceeded $9 million U.S. million. The contract for the Westminster Secondary School was awarded to and signed by Arbasu and Sons for $4.7 million. U.S. million. BK International was also given the contract to construct the Good Hope Secondary School. That contract is worth US $4.8 million. The construction of the school is scheduled to last for 15 months, provided there are no hiccups. Education Minister Nicolette Henry said the schools will be built with modern specifications and will have to meet the standards the ministry requires. And the expectations of the Ministry of Education and that we will be able to serve um, our student population and teachers and the country at large very well through the building of these two new schools. This is a project from the World Bank um, funding and also funding from Guyana. Meanwhile, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education, Adele Clark, gave information on what is expected in the schools. These buildings will feature, they would have classrooms that can house between 800 to 1,000 students, a multi-purpose hall, an administrative building, home economics, you have the science laboratories, physics, chem, and biology, library, computer laboratories, an audiovisual room, and provision will be made for the allied arts to provide new subjects in the areas of visual arts, music, and dance. 
While the government is building more schools to ensure access to education is unhindered, the ministry is faced with another major strike by teachers. This is due to the failure of the ministry to meet the demands of the Guyana Teachers Union. The union had requested a 40% increase in salaries for teachers and also wanted the working conditions to be improved. Currently, the DTU and the ministry has taken the matter to arbitration. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Attorney at law Charles Ramson Jr. says he has not given up his hope of becoming the People's Progressive Party's presidential candidate for the 2020 general elections. However, Ramson said his party is now focused on upcoming local government elections, after which attention will be turned to the 2020 polls. Here is that story. So to speak. No, I, I, I think that it's, it's a tight race. I think at the moment it's a tight race, um, and I, I'm glad that it is because uh, it means that we've got strong candidates. Ramson is confident in his vision that it is now for the nation to have a younger individual to govern the country. However, the former PPP Member of Parliament said his party is now channeling its energies on the local government elections slated for November 12th. Um, there haven't been formal engagements, uh, but at the moment what we have is... Uh, a local government election coming up. What the General Secretary has said, um, and I think all of the other interested ca candidates, um, it, it's clear to them as well because they are, most of them are part of the Executive Committee. Um, they, we know that our priority is local government election, and then which also means that um, shortly thereafter, I think the issue of our presidential candidacy will be dealt with. When asked what he will bring to the table when the time comes for a possible nomination as the party's presidential candidate, Ramson explained based on the current youth demographics of Guyana and the change in tides of ideals and desire for true development, he is the best choice for the party. Reporting from Shona Gomes, Cornelius. Approximately 14 investors have met with officials on the privatization of the three sugar estates, raising concerns about taxation, work permits, and the country's energy policy. The Special Purpose Unit, SPU, of the National Industrial and Commercial Investments Limited, NISIL, said the potential bidders hail from Trinidad, Canada, and Guyana. NISIL is hoping that all three estates located at East Damrara, Rose Hall, and Skeldon are sold by the first quarter of 2019. The meeting, which was held at the Marriott Hotel on September 25 was convened by the privatization team led by Wilfred Bagaloo of PricewaterhouseCoopers. Bagaloo said the forum provided an avenue for prospective inv investors to raise concerns, questions, or inhibitions with the aim of ensuring a successful privatization process. Many potential bidders requested an extension of the deadline, which was initially set for September 28. The, privati the privatization team agreed to extend the bid submission date to October 31. Nissel's SPU said it has also been working feverishly to make sure that all obligations arising out of the recently executed bond have been met. When we come back, we will tell you about the large number of youths who found themselves behind bars in Guyana. Stay with us. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Tayo's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know the secret. secret. <laughs> you can be a millionaire.
Millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick bet for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing. I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, Ground Floor City Mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful marrow, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. SlimJet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick, and painless. Stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at the Slim Jet, City Mall, second floor. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. Welcome back. You're watching MTV's News Update. Public Security Minister Kamrat Ramchutan says that, that young people must not make up the jail population. As such, the minister claimed that his government has passed the Juvenile Justice Bill to ensure youths receive better justice. Minister Ramchutan was at the time speaking at a sensitization session on juvenile justice at the Marriott Hotel. The minister noted that many persons in the prison system are repeat offenders who would have started a life of crime early. As such, he claimed that the country must prevent youths from being involved in crime at a very young age. I don't want our young people to constitute a jailhouse nation here um, in Guyana. The minister also blamed some parents who encouraged their children to consume alcohol at a young age. Specific to the juvenile justice bill that was passed earlier in the year, Minister Ramjitan noted that the commencement order is before the Chamber of the Attorney General. However, there are a host of things that need to be done before the bill is efficiently implemented. We still have not appointed a director of um, juvenile justice. We have not appointed the members of the board of the juvenile justice committee. We haven't um, as yet gotten the temporary facilities which we want so that the children who have been, um, to use the old word, remanded, where they will go um, rather than the state of things now 
Um, we would prefer them in better facilities, far more accommodating. He also urged the media to inform and educate the public about justice for children. Also speaking at the sensitization session was president of the Guyana Press Association, Nazima Ragobir, who firmly stated that juvenile offenders deserve a second chance. They must be given a chance to behavior change where necessary, a right to be educated, a right to learn a trade, and more so a chance as a respectable citizen. The Juvenile Justice Bill, which repealed the Juvenile Offenders Act and the Training Schools Act, was passed in the National Assembly on April 26, 2018. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. Of the 2,245 prisoners housed at the various prisons across Guyana, 784 of them are between the ages of 18 and 36. This was revealed by Acting Director of Prison Gladwin Samuels. Online news site Newsroom quoted Samuels as saying that of the 2,165 men, 1,484 of them are convicted prisoners. Samuels said yesterday at the Thanksgiving service to begin Prison Service Week, which is being observed under the theme Revitalizing a Purpose Driven or organization that rehabilitating prisoners for reintegration into society when their time is up is key on the agenda. He, but he said much more needs to be done if the prison service were to successfully carry out that mandate and at the same time ensure that Guyana's prisons are compliant with the United Nations internationally accepted standards. Samuels said the prisons houses arsonists, child rapists, choke and robbers, drug addicts, drug lords, the seemingly mentally insane murderers, petty thieves, scam artists, plus offenders with various diseases. He said many current and future offenders will return to society and be a part of communities and even a part of our families and the system should not fail to rehabilitate them. He noted that though the prisoners are skillful in what they do, the officers are required to be non-judgmental and ensure that the human rights of offenders are upheld even when they are not adequately equipped to perform their functions. However, he committed to weeding out rogue elements from the service whom he described as salt and pepper in a fresh wound. Bees are essential to the continued existence of humans. This was the thrust of the message when the 9th Caribbean Beekeeping Congress was officially launched. Kibani Jordan has that report. Uh, if we are to create jobs in the sector and the sector must grow, it has to grow by revenue. Although production is something that we control, the market is something that we have to access. And if the market is access and we have the production, that is when the business will grow. President of the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce and Industry, GCCI, Diodat Indar. Indar added that once the beekeeping subsector grows, more employment opportunities will surface. While on the topic of honey production in Guyana, Chief Executive Officer of the Guyana Livestock Development Authority, Nigel Cumberbatch, said at the end of the Congress the importance is whether Guyana is self-sufficient and has reduced the imports of foreign products. I think at this time that gas looked at improving its relationship with crop farmers. Do, bees do an excellent job in pollinating our crops. Representative of the Inter-American Institute of Cooperation in Agriculture, Wilmot Garnett, also restated the importance of bees. As Lou Lyndon Stewart would usually say to re reinforce the importance of bees in the green economy, and I agree with Lyndon, no bees, no trees. I take it a little bit farther, no trees, no food. The Congress is scheduled to last for five days from November 19 to 23, 2018. Keep an Adrian reporting for MTV's News Update. Breast Cancer Awareness Month has been launched under the theme, I Have Hope, and will see a packed calendar of activities between October 12 and November 1, including an annual cancer awareness walk. The ministry is encouraging Guyanese to undertake the necessary cancer screening tests to ensure their health is in check. The Ministry of Public Health, partnering with the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, earlier today officially launched Breast Cancer Awareness Month at the Ministry Breakdown Office. Country representative of PAHO WHO, Dr. William Adukro, stressed the vital need for adequate and timely screening for early detection and monitoring of breast cancer. 
Dr. Adekro indicated that as a fact, Guyana and the Caribbean, when compared to the rest of Latin America and North America, accounts for the highest number of detected cases of breast cancer. Guyana recorded 6,518 cancers for the period 2003 to 2012, for an overall cumulative incidence rate of 867 per 7 per 100,000 population, and an annual incidence rate of 87.3 per 100,000 population. Of these, 3,956, about 60% were females, and 2,561, about 40% were males. Junior Minister of Public Health, Dr. Karen Cummings, indicated that the scourge of breast cancer, as well as other cancers such as cervical, colon, and stomach cancers, are all major priorities for her ministry. The government of Guyana, through the Ministry of Public Health, has begun to explore and implement numerous activities that will seek to curb this cancer epidemic. And some of these activities include appropriate staffing of the chronic non-communicable disease unit, allotment of adequate budgetary resources, training of healthcare professionals in the area of oncology, public-private partnerships with non-governmental and non-profit organizations, Additionally, the minister noted that an oncology department will soon be built at the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation to accommodate for the work that will be done, where free cancer screening will be made available. Minister Cummings also stressed the need for individuals tasked with providing the necessary screening and care to patients to do so with the approach to give the best advice, free of hassle, free of cost. Partnering with the Ministry of Public Health during Breast Cancer Awareness Month are the Pan American Health Organization, the World Health Organization, the Guyana Cancer Institute, and the Giving Hope Foundation. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. A 63-year-old cash crop farm of number 68 Village Current in Burbese will be charged for possession of an unlicensed gun. Police headquarters said that on September 30, 2018, ranks acted on information received and visited the man's home where they conducted a search. An unlicensed single-barrel shotgun and 16 live cartridges were found. Police said the farm is being processed for court. Here is Celine Griffith with today's Court Roundup. Police Constable Ryan Prasad was today slapped with a second charge following a fatal accident on Mandela Public Road. It is alleged that on September 1, he drove motor vehicle PVV 4652 in a dangerous manner to the public, thereby causing the death of 23-year-old Akimo Anthony. He denied this charge. Police prosecutor Simon Payne did not object to bail and it was set to the tune of $250,000. Previous reports stated that on September 1, Prasad was driving motor vehicle PVV 4652, a Guyana police force minibus, when he collided with Akimo Anthony, who was riding on motorcycle CJ511. At the time of the accident, Prasad's breath alcohol level exceeded the legal limit. He was subsequently charged on September 6 for driving under the influence and granted $25,000 bail. Prasad will make his next court appearance on October 12, 2018. Troy Bourne and Dion Glasgow were today remanded after pleading not guilty to a wounding charge. The charge read that on September 25, the unlawfully and maliciously wounded Joel Leach with intent to maim, disfigure, disable or to cause actual bodily harm. According to the facts read in court by the prosecutor, the victim was approached by Glasgow, who fired several chops at him, which he barred with his hand. It was not finished there, as Bourne took the cutlass from Glasgow, unleashing a series of chops, which resulted in Leach losing a finger. The duo was refused bail and will make their next court appearance on October 15. Meanwhile, Troy Bourne was also charged separately for unlawfully assaulting Janika Prophet on September 23 at John Fernand's. He pleaded not guilty to the charge and was granted $100,000 bail. Reporting for MTV News Update, Celine Griffith.
up after the break. MTV's sport update and more. Stay with us. Just arrived at HomeSense Wholesale and Retail Farm Public Road, a wide design of PVC ceiling panels at the most affordable prices. So be sure to drop by. You can also catch deals on party items, baby care items, household items, footwear for ladies, gents and children, half a sacks, plastic chairs and tables, patio sets, carpets, fans, water dispensers, bicycles, trampolines, bouncy castles and much more. HomeSense Wholesale and Retail 31 Track A Farm East Bangdamarara is your one-stop shop for everything you need. Telephone numbers 619-8502 or 638-6861. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Introducing the new Softex Soft toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh, and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes, and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermite free and water-resistant. Enjoy one-year factory warranty along with our after-sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at Lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sport Update. Cricket West Indies CWI has confirmed the central contracts for Windies men's and Windies women's players for the 2018-2019 year. Three Guyanese have been included in the list. Their top order batsman Shimron Hetty Maya, spinner Devendra Bishu and fast bowler Kimo Paul. CWI said whilst the previous contracts expired on September 30, the new contracts will be backdated to July 1 and run until June 30, 2019 as CWI aligns all players on the same contract period. 
Chief Executive Officer Johnny Grave says all Windies and franchise players are now contracted from July 1 to June 30, 2019, with their performances assessed from April 1 to March 31. This, he said, will allow for a more efficient process of reviewing, renewing and awarded contracts within West Indies professional cricket and give everyone at least three months to plan for the season ahead. He reminded that the regional season will start each year with the Caribbean Premier League followed by the Super 50 Cup and finish on the four-day competition. The decision is to offer all format red and white ball contracts, according to Chairman of Selectors Courtney Brown, who said this allows for the better management of players as it relates to their development. He said at the time of recommending contracts in June, some players would have developed in different formats after the process had finished, so their recent performances can't be considered until the next contract cycle. India's women have named their 15-member squad for the ICC World's Women T20 in 2018 in the Caribbean in November, and it features several young faces. The Harman Preet Kaur led squad has seven members who have played fewer than 15 2020 international matches, with one uncapped player in Dayalan Hemlatha. With experienced Julan Goswami having hung up her boots, the pace attack comprises of Mansi Joshi, Arundhati Reddy, and Pooja Vastrakar. Poonam Yadav, Ekta Bisht, and all rounder Anuja Patil will be bringing their experience to the bowling attack, while Radha Yadav, Deepti Sharma, Hemlatha, and Kaur herself will be backing them in the spin bowling department. Jemima Rodriguez, who top scored in the 4 0 series sweep of Sri Lanka and shot up to number 14 on the ICC Women's T20I batting rankings in just her 14th match, will be among those playing their maiden ICC tournament. India are in Group B of the tournament along with Australia, New Zealand, Pakistan, and Ireland. They opened their campaign on November 9 against New Zealand in Guyana. The squad comprises of Harman Preet Kaur, Smriti Madhana, Mithali Raj, Jemima Rodriguez, Veda Krishnamurthy, Dipti Sharma, Tania Bhattaya, Poonam Yadav, Radha Yadav, Anuja Paktil, Ekta Bisht, Dayalan Hemlatha, Manshi Joshi, Pooja Vashtrakar, and Arundhati Reddy. Chelsea Griffith awarded for MTV's Sports Update. Still in cricket, Sunil Ambri made an unbeaten 114 of 98 balls to give the West Indians first innings honours in their two-day warm-up game against the Indian board president's 11 in Vadudara. Ambri, who would also hit 100 against India at Beckenham in July, continued his impressive form to press his case for a place in the 11 when West Indies take on India in the first test in Rajkot from October 4. The top three crack. Craig Brathwit, Kewan Powell and Shai Hope and Shane Dowrich pitched in with useful contributions too, helping their side take a six-run lead after the host had declared on 360 for six at the end of the first day. Sherman Hetemai 7 and Roston Chase 5 were the only frontline West Indian batsmen to be dismissed for single-digit scores. Brathwit and wicket-keeper batsman Dowrich made half-centuries before Ambry, who came in at number seven, took charge. He raised his first 50 of 60 balls and then accelerated to his second of a third only 35 balls. All told, he hit 17 fours and 5 sixes. The Indian spinners left armor Surab Kumar and off spinner Jalat Saxna toiled away for 50 overs, conceding 221 runs between them while taking three wickets. Madhya Pradesh Seema Avesh Khan was the pick off the bowlers for the host, finishing with four for 60 in 17 overs. Head coach of the National Under-20 men's team, Dwayne Dover, has named a 26-man provisional squad as Ghana prepare for the first match of the CONCACAF Men's Under-20 Championship. The squad consists of Guyanese-based players, including four goalkeepers, seven defenders, 11 midfielders, and four forwards, two of which were selected from the recently concluded Indigenous Heritage Games. Dover said training commenced last Sunday with physical evaluation of the players to test their level of fitness. He added, the aim is to qualify. He also made it clear to the players the level of discipline, dedication, commitment and hard work that is required. During the Indigenous Heritage Games, there was much scouting by the GFF and two talents were identified, which added strength to the under-20 national program. Neston Brown and David Coates from the Rupununi Football Association will be joining the team this week. National Under-20 coach, developer and head of sports science Wilson Toledo, commenting on the physical evaluation of the players conducted, said the group has done fairly well over the past week. 
Guyana's match schedule in the first round is as follows. November 2 versus Guatemala at 10 hours 30. November 6 versus the Cayman Islands at 10 hours 30. November 8 versus Curaçao at 12 hours 45. And November 10 versus El Salvador at 19 hours 45. All matches will take place at the IMG Academy in Florida, United States of America. Chelsea Griffith reporting for MTV's Sports Update. And finally in sport, Guyana made their way to round six where they dominated their games against their African opponents from Rwanda at the 2018 Chess Olympiad being held in Batumi, Georgia. Team Guyana clearly set aside their level of chess yesterday when they won their first team match. Game of the round would go to Glenford Corlett, who from early in the opening stage due to a closed center launched an attack against his opponent's castled king position. Another good game came from Tafin Khan, who played with the black pieces against Maxence Morara, with intent to play the London system with the white pieces. Morara encountered some inaccuracies with his move order, which Khan was quick to counter. Khan's last tactical move, pawn to c2, forked rd1 and kb1, was enough to pull off a brilliant win. Uprising talent Anthony Drayton made it his second win in a row when he tactically outplayed his African opponent Fidel Mutabazi with the Jocko Piano. It was sacrifices, forks, pins and double attacks all throughout this sharp game. However, Drayton proved his tactical arsenal was better when he sacked to stop from castling then finished off with a brilliant kingside attack. Loris Nathu gained some confidence from this game after he managed to obtain a draw by a three-fold repetition against the slightly higher rated Orwin Murara. Meanwhile, in the women's section, team veterans national female champion Maria Verona Thomas and Sharifa Ali secured convincing wins for Guyana. First, Thomas Sicilian proved to be too much for Asha Kondo, who is unrated and threw her pieces away. Thomas accepted these gifts, then ruined the castle king's side to checkmate her opponent. The men's team is currently standing at 142 from 24 games with 6 points, while the women's team is standing at 130 with 6 points from 24 games also. With 5 rounds left, the Guyanese contingents will be looking to finish strongly, accumulating as much wins as possible. Chelsea Griffiths reported for MTV's Sports Update. And that's our sports package for this evening. Stay with us. More news after the break. Welcome to Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., Guyana's sole distributor of NP and ultra lubricants, SKF bearings, seal and belts, international trucks and parts, and NAPA batteries. With a bond capacity of 30,000 square foot, we offer superior brands at affordable prices and the best after-sale service. ISG supplies sustainable integrated solutions to make your business a growing success. Visit us at our new main office at lot 4Q Peters Hall, ISG, the best opportunity to make the right choice. In the region, the International Court of Justice, ICJ, has ruled against Bolivia in its dispute with neighboring Chile over access to the Pacific Ocean, a few dating back to the late 19th century. Landlocked Bolivia lost access to the sea in 1884 after a war with Chile and has tried to regain it ever since. The court said Chile was not obliged to negotiate granting Bolivia access. The ruling, which comes after five years of deliberations, is final and binding. Despite the final nature of the ruling, Bolivian President Evo Morales said Bolivia will not give up. Internationally, Donald Trump said the new trade deal struck between Canada and Mexico was the most important ever agreed by the U.S. The president said the United States-Mexico-Canada agreement, USMCA, which replaces NAFTA, would bring thousands of jobs back to North America. Speaking at the White House, Mr. Trump said the new pact vindicated his threats over trade tariffs. The new deal covered trade between the three countries worth $1.2 trillion and was truly historic, he said. It was also the biggest trade deal in the United States history, he told the press conference. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. And now let's take a look at the Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 793. Let's turn our attention to the Demerol Harbour Bridge and Burbies River Bridge schedules.
And that's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here is a reminder of our top stories. Missing Barbie's fishermen rescued two days after boat mishap. Guyana is not ready for law schools, says retired chancellor. A large number of Guyanese youths are finding themselves behind bars. And in sport, three Guyanese receive retainer contracts from Cricket West Indies. Catch our rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thank you for watching. Good night.